where do you think you are going? Just out for a minute. What for? I don't have to say. I just... You are lying. You are going out to talk to a union organizer. I pay you to work. Nobody goes away from her machine. Every window stays closed. Every door stays closed. Go back to the machine. No union organizers for you, Gally. I've done you alive. March 25th. 1911. Trying to waste Doors locked from outside. Windows tightly closed. Near the closing hours of March 25th, 1911, a fire broke out at the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory near Washington Square Park in the Greenwich Village neighborhood of Manhattan, New York. This fire would be the change of many laws in the legislature because of one person who witnessed it all from the streets below. My name is Jason Molinari, and this is Breaking the Chain, a documentary full of blood, sweat, and tears. For the past three months, I have done research on this topic, and thanks to Cornell University for providing the public with an online database of primary sources, it is helped me to write this documentary. This documentary will be formatted and structured around BuzzFeed and Solve's series, which has since ended, to provide the best information in as much detail as possible. So, let's dive in. The Brown Building, also known as the Ash Building, formerly the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory, was a shirtwaist factory responsible for the making of vintage clothing. The factory was located in the small area of Greenwich Village of Manhattan, New York, and owned by Max Blank and Isaac Harris, two Jewish immigrants. Most of the workers who worked at the Triangle Shirtwaist were Italian or Jewish immigrants who had immigrated from Eastern Europe primarily. On a Saturday afternoon on March 25th, 1911, a fire was detected on the 8th floor. There are many theories on how the fire was actually started, but what is commonly believed is that a worker was smoking and forgot to throw away the cigarette. People began to yell fire throughout the floors, but the only floor that wasn't notified was the ninth. Luckily, those on the higher floors were able to escape via the fire escape. However, the stairs on the fire escape snapped in half, and many fell up to 9 stories high, falling to their deaths. Those, such as the owners of the building, were able to make it to the roof and jump onto surrounding buildings, and almost everyone who made it to the roof survived. Around 10 minutes after the fire began, around 100 people were ash, and the elevators could not hold any more passengers. So people rolled down elevator cables with just their bare hands, covered in blackened ash and blood from the fire that was burning their skin. Many did not make it out. 
because locking doors to factories was a practice back then. Even if you survived from the elevators, there was still no way out. Bodies fell down stairwells like dolls. The fire escape was broken. People resorted to jumping out windows. Luckily, the fire was seized, but 146 people lost their lives to the fire. During the event, Francis Perkins, a rising political member who would later become FDR's Secretary of State, witnessed a tragedy from the floors below. Perkins was the first female to ever serve in a presidential cabinet and heavily committed to the Social Security Act. After the fire, many merchant laborers and workers took to the streets across the U.S., fighting for their working rights and the end to the locking of doors from the outside, so in the event of the fire, people can escape. They also protested for, for better fire escapes and longer hoses for fire trucks, since none of the fl hoses were able to reach the 8th floor. But why did what started as a small fire become so deadly? Max Blake and Isaac Harris constructed the Ash Building, or the Triangle Shoreways Factory, claiming it was something indestructible. Yeah, right. It was one of the tallest buildings in New York at the time, and advertised as a skyscraper. B because of the equipment inside, it caused a single match to kill 146 people in an hour. Because of the fire, a lot of government officials, such as Francis Perkins, among others, noticed this disaster firsthand, and did everything in their physical power to get the message to the government that any sort of factory shouldn't be locked from the outside, and instead from the inside. This prompted a lot of protests, and people who supported this cause, and eventually the government listened after a year or so. Isaac Harris and Max Planck were later tried in, in the New York court system that took place in December of 1911. After over 70 testimonies from the, from the survivors, the two proved not guilty, and as punishment were fined a whopping $70 per casualty. And since 146 people died, the two, who were thought to be millionaires, paid over $300,000 in today's money. Max Blank and Isaac Harris reopened the Triangle Shirtwaist a year later, but in two years the building would be abandoned, as the factory filed bankruptcy months after it reopened due to Max Blank and Isaac Harris being so poor they probably didn't even have enough money to get an iced tea at McDonald's. And after the building closed, the two of them disappeared, and they were never seen or heard from again. A couple years later, sometime in the 1920s, New York University, the college my brother attends currently, purchased the rebuilt abandoned factory and turned the factory into classrooms, and to this day, the building is still being used. A hundred years later, in 2011, a memorial was built in the heart of Washington Square Park of Greenwich Village. In fact, my brother walks past the factory every day on his way to class. So that's the NHD version of my documentary about the Triangle Sherways factory. Thank you for listening. It caught on fire and the blaze spread very rapidly. Uh, there was only one means of exit available. Uh, the other two means of exit were the elevator, which was ablaze almost immediately as the flames got into this open shaft and spread from floor to floor. And the second uh, other exit uh, was locked. It was an exit to the roof. Uh, not a very good means of exit at best, but it would have saved most of the people in that building if it had not been locked. It had been locked by the employer himself uh, because he feared that on a Saturday afternoon...